Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Katie and today we are doing a August reading wrap up. I've been reading so much this month and I love to watch booktube videos so I thought I'm gonna hop on that and share what I've been reading because maybe some of you out there are interested. So this is a Christian channel so I'll start off with the two books that I have read um, with a Christian perspective. The rest of them are just normal fiction but I did read two Christian books this month. So the first one that I read is called Switch On Your Brain by Dr. Caroline Leaf. Now, I accidentally bought this one by mistake. I was supposed to buy the devotional, which is a 365-day walkthrough, kind of, what this book talks about. But I would only rate this book two stars, unfortunately. It has a lot of scientific um, language used in it. It repeats these kinds of diagrams throughout. It just wasn't necessarily an interesting read. Don't get me wrong, there are some aspects of this that I definitely found interesting, but overall I found it quite repetitive and just not really something I would ever go back to and read again. The basic premise of this is looking at our brains in a scientific and biblical view, which sounded really interesting to me in the first place because it's looking at science, but also from a biblical standpoint, which obviously that would be what I would be interested in. Um, and it's about how we can control our thoughts and it's about renewing our mind, which are all biblical. When thoughts come in, we can hold them captive and we can cast them out. So I love the idea behind this book, but I just found it so repetitive. She says the same thing over and over again. There's a lot of text in here that I felt didn't need to be in there. But I do think if I'd bought the devotional version of this, the one that was just a page a day, I would have got a lot more out of it. So I still might buy that one. But this one, I wouldn't really recommend. I'd give it like two stars, maybe two and a half. But it has this plan in it, so it's called the 21 Day Brain Detox Plan. After reading the first half of the book, I was put off by that and I thought I don't even want to attempt that plan. So yeah, unfortunately this one was a bit of a miss, but never mind. Then the next book that I read is called Practicing the Way by John Mark Comer. I had high expectations of this one because this is the guy that wrote The Ruthless Elimination of Harry, which I absolutely love that book. But this one, not so much. I sat with my highlighter ready to highlight and take notes on everything that he was saying and I didn't highlight a single thing in this book not a single thing. I felt like this was a book that was written to either brand new Christians or non-Christians and it was trying to kind of convert people and explain who Jesus was and all that type of stuff. So someone who's been a Christian for a long time, I didn't feel like this actually taught me anything, but I do feel like this could be a useful tool to pass on to anybody that I know who's a new Christian. And um, so I will hold on to this, but for me, I didn't get much out of it, so I'd only give that two stars as well, unfortunately. Okay, and then moving on to the fiction that I've read this month, I picked up Powerless and then quickly moved on to Reckless. I absolutely love these books, I ate them up. I read this one while I was on a camping trip and I couldn't put it down, I thought it was fantastic. I love how fast paced it was, how it had so much action packed into it, but it's mainly clean, there's no smut in this. She does use a little bit of bad language in here, but nothing where you're kind of like shocked and repulsed and wanna put it immediately down. I really enjoyed this, I loved the story of it, and I really loved the characters. So I ran and I quickly picked up Reckless, which is the follow on story from Powerless, and I read this within one day. I could not put it down. I thought it was so good. Yeah, brilliant storyline. So without any spoilers, the basic story is that it's kind of a bit like Hunger Games, I guess. So we have the elites, which have magical powers, and then we have the ordinaries, which have no powers. And it's kind of a story between two characters that come from either side of this pond of powers and no powers. Um, and you follow them through the trials and things that they go through. It's really, really good. It's a really good read. If you like fantasy, you will really enjoy this. So I would rate both of them four stars. It's really hard for me to give away five stars, by the way. I very rarely give away a five star. So if it's four star, it's really good. And in August, I also read The Lord of the Rings. I haven't finished the third one yet, but I finished the first and the second books. I really enjoyed these, the first one especially, but then I went and watched the movies that follow on from these, and I think I did too much Lord of the Rings in one go. So I'm taking a break before I read the third one because I felt kind of a Lord of the Rings overload. Um, I got overwhelmed by it all. But the way that Tolkien 
came up with these stories and the description of the world and the characters and, and how on earth he came up. Wow, what an amazing author. Like, to be able to write and create those worlds from your own brain <laughs> blows me away. Like, he is an amazing author. Loved them. The next one that I read is called Zero Days by Ruth Ware. She is a thriller author. I've read a few of her books. I've read The It Girl and The Turn of the Key and I enjoyed both of them, um, especially It Girl because it was set in Cambridge and I love Cambridge. Um, and this one's called Zero Days and without any spoilers, it's about a girl who goes into companies to test out their security systems to make sure that their security systems are tight. So what she does is she sneaks in um, basically disrupts their security system and gets out um, and if she gets caught great they've got high security and if not then that's what they pay her for to find kind of those loopholes in their systems and then this isn't a spoiler because it's written on the back of the book but she arrives home one night and finds that her husband is dead and that she is a suspect in the murder so it's all about her kind of dealing with that and trying to find out who the real killer was. So it's got this three stars. The first chapter was really hard to get into. There was a lot of terminology, computing and security and all these abbreviations and stuff and I nearly put it down, but I'm glad I didn't. I kept reading and then I really got into it and it was actually pretty good, easy read. I like these types of books. When I start to get into a slump, they, these types of th thrillers, bring me back out of the slump so that I can start reading other books again. So that got me out of my little fantasy slump. Then I read this one, which is called Tomorrow, Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. I'd heard a lot of good things about this one, so I thought I would give it a go. It's not my typical read. I'm not really interested in video games and things. And this is based on two people who create video games. So I thought, mm, I probably won't find this very interesting, but actually I enjoyed it. The writing's really good. Again, it's not really something that I would call my favourite type of genre though. As it says on the back cover, it's not a romance, but it is about love. And because of the characters in the book, that's what kept me reading. Um, I love the way that she wrote the characters and I really did want to see what happened with them in the end. So it made me keep picking it up and reading. So I would rate this a three star. I did enjoy it, but wasn't my favourite. And then the last one that I read was another thriller and this is called The Glass House and it's by Eve Chase. I'd never heard anybody talk about this book before. And I did enjoy this book, but I did find myself skim reading across some of it. But what I liked, it didn't take long to read because the font is huge. So you can fly through this book, especially if you kind of skim read in some of the parts where sometimes I feel like authors could take out huge paragraphs of their text that's just not really adding anything to the story. And this author kind of does that quite a lot. The story is told from like four points of view, I think. Um, which is quite confusing in the beginning because you're trying to remember who each character is You'll just get into one of the girls stories and then you jump to another girl and start a whole new story And then you'll jump to another girl and get a whole new story So it takes you a while to get back to the one that you were originally reading and remember what her story was and oh, it just got very confusing um, but then about halfway through I finally clicked who all the characters were and was able to read it more naturally so because of that I'd only give this a two and a half stars but the story was good it was interesting it's about a nanny who works for a rich family and they basically move house and they move to the woods and there's all kinds of things going on um, within this family dynamic and it's yeah, it is quite interesting. It says on the back here, the glass house is not really about a murder or a creepy house, but about families, the one we're born into, the ones we make, and especially the ones that we flee. And then it says, when the Harrington family discovers an abandoned baby deep in the woods, they decide to keep her a secret and raise her as their own. But within days, a body is found in the grounds of their house and their perfect new family implodes. So... I'm sure you can tell from that it is quite an intriguing story and once you start it you do want to know what happened. I did find it quite hard to keep going through the story like I say and keep up with all of the characters and things. So I would rate this one a two and a half stars because of that. And then finally in my bible this month I have been reading through the New Testament. Um, I started I think in August I started in Romans. Yeah I did. Um, so I've read Romans and I've read 1 Corinthians and I took lots and lots of notes so if you would like to see those notes just head over to my Instagram. I tend to post all of my notes on there um, but I did learn 
loads and loads of wonderful things from these books. They're really interesting books written by Paul. Um, they're not very long, so I don't know why it's taken me a month to go through them, to be honest, but sometimes I take longer than other months. But overall, for August, I read nine books, 11 if you count the two books from the Bible that I read, and I think that's a pretty successful month, so I'm pretty happy with that. And I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.